Hey everyone, so this is another one of our Ask Me Anything videos. Can you handle the truth, so to speak? Um, you don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! So over the... We, we get... I get videos daily from viewers from all over the world, which is wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, for those of you that I respond to, if uh, you will notice that a lot of times my video, my, my responses are uh, to the point and not a lot of fluff, and that's because I, I, I generally run short of time, and so I want to try and get to answer uh, you as quickly as possible. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I've collected some of the most popular questions, um, and these are general questions, they're not necessarily very specific ones because everybody's uh, specific questions are not necessarily useful to everybody else. So, um, but we will do more of them over time. So this is part one. Uh, there'll be two parts to this uh, video. Okay, first question. Um, Sonus Faber versus Wilson Audio versus Acora. What are the differences between the three brands and what do you like about each of them? Um, so I'm just going to say in general, I'm going to compare speakers around about the 50,000 Canadian dollar range, okay? Sonus Faber, out of all the brands that we carry, Sonus Faber is easily the speaker that makes the most beautiful music. And what I mean by that is that regardless of whether the recording is superb or average, the music sounds wonderful. You, you can enjoy the music quite easily. It doesn't highlight the bad recordings. It doesn't necessarily... Uh, bring out the very best of the best recordings. You will hear elements of everything. It's just not the very best in anything in particular. Sort of like a, a decathlete, if you think about it. In Olympics, the sexiest event is the 100 meter, right? Um, everybody wants to watch that to see who the world's fastest athlete is. But what's interesting is that the world's fastest athlete is rarely the very best athlete in, for example, the 400, or the hurdles, or the long jump. Whereas the decathlete, by definition, is the world's best athlete at that given time in, across 10 uh, events. And for me, that's what Sonus Farber tends to be. It's, um, it does so many things well. It doesn't do anything bad. It doesn't do anything outrageously great. So, for example, if let's say you, for you, the most important thing is sound staging and imaging. I can't say that the Sonos Farber is the very best in sound staging and imaging. Quite honestly, I don't know which one does. Um, or you want a speaker that has the very best bass. I can't say that the Sonos Farber does that. But overall, it does great. It sounds wonderful and it looks great. Okay, so Wilson Audio. Wilson Audio in some areas is substantially better than Sonus Farber. Um, it has better dynamics, both micro and macro. When you're talking about the difference between the loudest sounds and the softest sounds, that's the micro. And all the little nuances in between, um, Wilson Audio is better for sure. Wilson Audio can play... Um, Rough recordings, um, when I say rough, I mean um, EDM, um, hard metal better, interestingly enough, uh, as well as the softest, sweetest uh, um, recordings of violin better in terms of their dynamics, not necessarily in terms of the tone. Um, pound for pound, or I should say level for level, model for model, Wilson's bass is generally better, goes lower. Let me come back first. Uh, um, to finish off with the Sonus Farber, I, I, would, I would say if you, if, if you know about cars or if you own some great cars, um, the Sonus Farber is like the Bentley Continental GT that I had for about uh, nine months. Uh, spectacularly built, just luxury at its finest. The, the, the metal work is gorgeous, the leather is to die for, every control that you touch is, is just solid and engaging and it's, you know you're in luxury. That's, that's, and it looks the part. You, know? you close the door and the thing goes, Vroom! you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful. The torque is so big that, uh, you know, it's just marvelous. And then the, the ride is so comfortable. When you go over a bump, it doesn't jar you. That, that's uh, Sonus Faber in a word. 
So with Wilson Audio, it's more like um, a Porsche 911, much more of a performance vehicle, especially the early ones. They were very nimble, very, uh, the response was great, the steering felt wonderful, um, you know, before they became very bloated and heavy and so on. I, I loved those, those vehicles. But the new Wilsons, especially when they came up with the soft dome tweeters, that's when they started to sound beautiful as well as accurate. The early ones with the titanium dome tweeters, uh, cone tweeters, were certainly very, very neutral for their time, very accurate for their time, right? But they were also extremely uh, demanding. You had to have proper electronics, really good recordings in order for the speaker to absolutely blow you away. If you played average recordings, it wouldn't sound that great. The new Wilsons don't have that issue in large part. So uh, the Wilsons for me would be more like the, as I say, the Porsche, the 911s. Uh, um, now, interestingly enough, the early Wilsons with the uh, titanium tweeters, they're more like the Porsche 930, the Widowmaker, as, as many people call it, because that car was very hard to drive. The engine was over the rear axle. They will snap around and kill you. So that's, that's the early Wilsons. The Acora is fascinating. There are times I am absolutely thrilled with the sound. You sit down with a great recording like Belafonte at Carnegie Hall, um, and you you are right there. You are there with Harry Belafonte in 19, what is it, 59 or 63, and you're there, time is captured in a bottle, and you are experiencing the history of that moment. It's wonderful. Um, it is so transparent. It, 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 it shows you layers in the recording in terms of the depth and the width that is um, almost uniquely special to a Cora. The um, transparency, the natural transparency inherent in the chorus is fantastic. You buy a, a new set of cables and it will tell you what you just bought. You change from amplifier to another amplifier, it'll tell you what you just did. You level the speakers, even adjusting it, and you go, oh my god, soundstage is, is, is more locked in. Those kinds of little tweaks pay, them, pay themselves off in your effort to do them. Whereas uh, with Wilson, it does pay you off, but it doesn't nag you to tell you that, oh yeah, you should try and do this. And with the Sonus Farber, it doesn't nag you at all. You certainly should do all those kinds of things, but you put them in, plug them in, and they're stable, and you start enjoying it. So depending on the kind of personality you are, the Acora, for the person who is very into um, detail and execution and wanting to get the most out of everything, the Acora will, will uh, uh, pay you in spades. Okay, hopefully that answers that question. Next question. Um, best values in the Macintosh line. So this is quite interesting. I had to think about this because I love pretty much everything they make, but in terms of best value, I would say it's specifically the integrated apps the Macintosh MA352 and the Macintosh MA8950. They're different from each other. The, the 352 is a hybrid with a tube preamp and a solid state amplifier. The 8950 is pure solid state. Um, they both sound somewhat different and yet there's a lot, a lot of similarities. The 8950 is more poised. I find it's very smooth, very stable, more poised. The, the, the base is, is uh, powerful, punchy, and detailed. Uh, I love the fact that it has um, a DAC built in, and so for the money, you don't have to buy another DAC, which will cost more, and the DAC inside is wonderful. Um, the 352 is more of a youngster, a little bit more belligerent in the way it sounds. The, the bass is rounder, there's a bit of a hump in the mid bass or so. The, the, the mids have this rambunctious character of sound. It's more three-dimensional, um, but it's, it's a bit more unruly. It's not quite as controlled. It's not quite as um, refined, but boy, what a beautiful sound. It, it'll take you on a ride. The downside is it doesn't have a DAC. So in the entire lineup, if, if I were looking for best value for money, that's it. 
Now, if I were looking for best value in terms of a separate, the preamp, uh, the preamp power, uh, definitely the C2700 uh, tube preamplifier with the uh, MC462 power amplifier. Those two combined together, magic, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so that's the Macintosh question. Uh, one last uh, question for this video. Where is Vilip and CC? So, uh, those of you who have been watching us for a number of years will know uh, Vilip was one of our staff members for many years and he was an important part of our uh, team as well as the videos. He made the videos interesting to watch. And not that I said interesting, I didn't necessarily say that uh, you would agree with him because he was pers uh, polarizing for many of you. But, like with a lot of things, um, just because it's polarizing doesn't mean that you don't enjoy watching and, and he was wonderful that way. Well, I had to let Philip go many, many months ago. Um, just a lot of things that just came to the surface and just bubbled up over time and regardless of how I tried to reconcile it with him, it just wouldn't work. So I don't want to air our dirty laundry to, in front of everybody. It's not fair to him. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's not fair to me. But uh, let's just say that um, I, I honestly did my very best and at the end of the day, I just couldn't uh, uh, continue with that situation. Uh, CC is different. I had to fire CC. That that horrible, lazy, no. Uh, CC was a co-op student. She was wonderful um, and her work term finished and so she had to go back to school. As a matter of fact, she came to visit us last Saturday, right, Allison? Mm -hmm. She came to visit us with two of her friends and we had a great reunion. So uh, hopefully she'll come back and again, we'll be able to do a quick uh, catch up video with her for all of you. All right, so that's part one. We'll do a part two shortly. See you again soon, bye-bye.